Uh, I said I was going to do two videos and I've ended up doing four, which I knew would probably be the case. Um, in this last video, I just want to show you a few extra little tips and uh, tricks that are really, really useful. Um, the first one is um, how to wipe out a redrum. Now, you could basically just delete it and reset it, but I don't want to do that because I've got all my wiring in place and I, and I want to keep that set up. So you can very easily just right click anywhere and choose initialize patch. And as you can see, that's wiped out all our drums for us and reset everything. I'll just do that again so you can see it. Right click, initialize patch. Uh, let's try that again. There we go, and they've all disappeared. Okay, I'm gonna uh, load up another bank. Let's do something slightly different. Let's do a house kit. And I'm just gonna draw in a very quick house drum pattern. Uh, actually, the patterns have remained uh, because all we've done is wipe out the sounds. Um, so I'm going to go to a different drum bank. And I'm just gonna draw in, I just want really kicks and hi-hats at the moment. Make it a bit brighter. Uh, okay. Now, something I want to demonstrate is the notion of groove uh, or shuffle. And this is really important. So, we've got this shuffle button here. There it is. And if we turn shuffle on, this now will look to the global shuffle setting. Now they've moved it in reason four. It used to be down here somewhere. You now have to turn it on in the regroove mixer. And there is your global shuffle. And what the shuffle will do is now add some swing feel to any notes that are in between the traditional uh, sort of 16th beats. If we have a listen, if we turn shuffle off and play it back. Turn that hi hat up a bit. If we start to turn the shuffle up, gives us much more swing now, and this will work really well with other sounds, things like toms. That's a clap. If we turn the shuffle off, you can you hear how it just completely straightens up? Okay, so I would suggest if you want to give your drums a bit more of a looser feel and a, and a bit more swing, really start getting to work with uh, the shuffle settings. Another thing I want to look at is flamming. Uh, let's get a snare on the go. And we'll get another hi-hat, actually. She's got some very odd reverse settings, which I don't want. Okay, we'll use this hi-hat. Really makes so much difference, that swing. Anyway, we're going to focus on this. We're going to use flamming, and flamming is like a drum technique, like a double hit. And you can see it's flammed when the red light is on. So, the more flamming you add, the more space there is between the double hit. It's nice for sort of um, almost triplet feel effects. Now, I did say that I would look at uh, the S1 and S2 um, functions. I said I would do that in 
video two and I forgot. So I'm just going to show you how that works. Now, the S1 and S2, this refers to, I'm just going to close this down. This refers to the send effects that are used up on the mixing desk and send effects I haven't looked at yet. Um, so I'm going to assume that you understand what send effects are. So I'm just going to create a couple of send effects. And we'll create a delay. So the idea, if you're not sure what a send effect is, is that it's an effect that gets sent uh, to the... I'll start again. If we want to send the sound to an effect through the mixing desk, uh, then we use the send effect. The idea being, for example, reverb uh, is on um, all the way across uh, these knobs at the top, this number one. So through the mixing desk, for example, if we wanted to add some reverb to this hit, you can really hear that kicking in. You can see it activating as well. You can try it on others. And if we wanted to add some delay, It's a bit messy, but you get the idea. Basically, what S1 and S2 do is exactly that, um, assuming that you're not using a mixing desk. Uh, now, we've got this set up at the moment, so our redrum is wired up to the mixer, which I think is the way to work. If you didn't and you just had your main output going to the mixing desk, then you would use S1 and 2. So if we turn these down, and let's just play our pattern. So if we've got the tom on three, we can just turn up S1 on here. And you know they're connected because it's these two cables here. It's chaining the send effect. Okay, let's see if we can see that in action. There we go. So it's chaining the send between uh, auxiliary send one and uh, auxiliary uh, auxiliary send on the mixing desk and auxiliary send on the redrum. But you know what though, I I would personally, if it was me, just wire it up, save it as a template, and then you've got four choices of send effects rather than just working with two. The very last thing, and uh, I mentioned this uh, in an earlier tutorial, is how you might want to work with the steps. So you can change the amount of steps that you want to work with by increasing upwards. So if we were to go to 32 steps and play the pattern, we don't get anything for a bar. And that's because we've not drawn anything in the second section. So if we were to go to our kick, but turn the flam off obviously, Uh, if basically, it's allowing us to extend the pattern. Uh, I find this process difficult because I, I can't really see what I'm doing and it's just a bit awkward. Um, it's very easy to forget to go between these two settings and it's, it's a lot of kind of faffing about really. It's important to know it's there. Uh, whether you use it or not is in, entirely up to you. <laughs>